And, and I remember when we started this uh, 10 years ago, we thought, well, you know, if we got several people together that could do the first two, two, two years, three years of uh, uh, implementing the federal regulation and uh, getting all of us who weren't really paying attention to the state regulations, getting us to uh, look at those things that we'd get it all figured out and everything would be uh, in its place and all set. And then uh, there you go. Things happened after that and the uh, federal regulation went here and there and uh, gave us all sorts of opportunity to keep uh, uh, keep inventing and, and reinventing. But the, one of the things about this was that this was all about uh, the, the last word in the SAN, uh, uh, SAN name of network, that what we figured out from the start was that there was going to be great value in terms of um, people, members getting together, uh, sharing what they found out, sharing what worked, sharing uh, you know, how they were communicating it to uh, to their uh, staff and and uh, and leadership on campus and and how to get uh, how to get through this how to work with the states how to work with the federal government that this is something uh, that is uh, I think has really come through in terms of uh, members sharing with each other and and, uh, and helping helping out on this and so uh, really glad that this has gone forward um, you know thank you to uh, um, it's so great to see all the, the great friends on here and. Um, you know, and thank you to, uh, to Cheryl for taking this uh, crazy idea we had and got it going for a few years. And then, uh, uh, you know, it's nothing like giving your baby to a mother of four because she knew what to do with it and she knew what to do to take, uh, uh, take it forward and make it happen. And so, Cheryl, with that, I'm so glad to see everybody here and I'll turn it back to you. Thank you very much, Russ. Yes, Russ and I talk about you know, um, him passing it to me. And I really appreciated that. And I was very honored to be able to take the baton um, with San. And, uh, you know, of course, I get to confer with him all the time, you know, to make sure we're staying within a vision. And that vision was very important to me, you know, having um, been an institution staff member and learning from Mary Ann Bokey and from Russ um, about state authorization. So I, I, I really felt it was a big responsibility that, to keep that um, moving in the direction that they developed. So without further ado, next thing that we're going to do is I have... Um, I'm going to end the slideshow and turn this over to our video of our friend. I have it at the wrong end. Here we go. Hopefully this works. Of course it didn't. Okay, we'll try this again. Uh, so what we did is we had asked several people if they wouldn't mind um, sending in a video of themselves um, with some sort of um, birthday message. And so we have uh, several. We'll start with this one then. Here we go. And isn't that adorable? I hope you all saw that. Um, did everybody see that? Give me a yes in the chat if you can. Um, that was our friends from the Bryan College of Health Sciences. I can't thank enough Christy, Cora, and Deb uh, for doing this for us, so thank you. And I have one other to share that I was really excited to get as well. Here we go. Cheryl, I'm not getting any sound off of this. Well, I understand that the audio didn't work for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thank you, the Sebesta, for a lovely rendition of Happy Birthday to us. I mean, sincerely, it was lovely. And uh, these videos will be posted on the SAN website. We'll have a birthday page on the SAN website with um, our winners and of uh, some of the contests. And uh, we'll also have um, these videos and um, what's coming up next, which is the It Depends contest. What we did is we had folks um, interested in developing 
what would be the uh, words that would go with the acronym for It Depends. And so we thought this was really a fabulous idea. So we really appreciated that, had a number of wonderful entries. And um, so these are some of our entries. I wanted to make sure everybody sees all of the entries before um, I um, announce the winner, but we will post these on the SAN website because these are just so fabulously done. And so um, from these, it, it just so happens that there is a winner. I have these acronyms on two different pages, but it just so happens that there's one on each page, but that's accidental. Um, so I just want to share that Sarah Cowell is the uh, winner, one of the winners, we have two winners of the acronym contest. And her uh, winning acronym is implement the doggone explanations of processes as explained neatly and deftly by sand. So we really appreciate that very much. Um, we had uh, about six or seven folks that acted as judges for us. And so we thank them very, very much um, for participating as judges. And we thank Sarah for submission uh, to our acronym contest. So our second set of acronyms just so happened that um, the second group was on this page again accidentally. Um, and let's see, the second winner. Ah, we have the second winner is uh, Bryan College. They're just really all over the place today. Isn't that great? So, Bryan College of Health Sciences won for its tricky. Department of Education Policy, ergo, never doubt SAN. So thank you very much to this team for providing uh, this award-winning uh, acronym for It Depends. And so all of these were fabulous. I can't say enough how much all of them were fabulous. And it was very difficult for our judges to make decisions about um, who the winners would be. And I do want to note, um, a special note from uh, one of our judges said, I needed to acknowledge the use of the word indubitably. So Katie Hoffman, well done. Use of the word indubitably uh, in your acronym. So that was fabulous. And then just really knocked me out is we had somebody develop the It Depends haiku. And so It Depends factors on which nobody other than we consider, which uh -huh. is fabulous. And we thank very much uh, our friend uh, Cleston Murray from uh, University of Arkansas for writing our haiku. So I'm going to move over to this point to um, bring in our special guests. We, uh, I have, uh, I was very pleased to be able to have the actual notebook <clears throat> from the very first SAN meeting on April 6, 2011. And one of the speakers, uh, several of the, of the speakers from that are here with us today, but the first one we're going to introduce is Mike Goldstein. Mike, uh, at the time, is, is an attorney, but at the time was with Dow Lonis and then moved on to Cooley and has been our friend for a very long time um, and uh, an award winner with WCET. So he's been a friend with WCET and SAN for quite a while. And uh, so I'd like to introduce Mike uh, to share with us a few words. And I'm going to uh, get rid of this slideshow so that we can see you better. Okay, well, I am really uh, delighted as an understatement <clears throat> to be here today. Um, uh, San and NC Sarah and all that we have now in uh, in online learning and of course the amazing explosion that occurred uh, a year ago when the uh, the meteor hit the earth and the dinosaurs trembled and online just exploded everywhere uh, I think is is so much of a tribute to what um, this group has accomplished in taking the impossible and making it possible. Uh, I wanna go back way before uh, San was even a figment of anyone's imagination. I'm looking at you, Russ. Um, in about 1984, there was a meeting of Shios. You remember who those folks are. And um, the meeting was called to deal with branch out of state branch campuses and everybody was really worried that they were going to find a way to circumvent circumvent state rules. And Gordon Davies, who was the Shio from the state of Virginia, got up and said, Ladies and gentlemen, 
we are perfecting the Pony Express while they're stringing the telegraph wires. And what he meant really accurately was that was the dawn of telecommunicated learning. We didn't, by the way, this was 1984. Al Gore had not yet invented the internet. So uh, we were talking about um, television being broadcast off a across state lines uh, out of a, a DC six circling the uh, the upper Midwest and dropping down television signals about videotapes being uh, mailed back and forth. And he said, we're entering a new world and we don't have any way to even remotely deal with this phenomenon. We're worried about branch campuses. And a bunch of us got together. I was counselor Shio at the time. A bunch of us got together and we went to, uh, to, to Fipsy and we said, you know, there's a problem out here and you guys should give us some money. And they said, we don't really understand the problem, but if you say it's there, we'll give you some money. And out of that came Project Altel, uh, which was an acronym for adult learning via telecommunications. And Project Altel was a joint effort of the SHIOs and what was then COPA, the Council on Post-Secondary Accredi Accreditation, which became CHIA. And the idea was to bring together the accreditors and the state regulators and come up with a common framework for regulating cross-border higher education. Now, we're sitting here today and we say, well, yeah. And back then it was, what in hell are you talking about? And we went over the course of two years and with a great many meetings and a lot of uh, sometime less than pleasant conversation. We, array, we, we agreed on a framework, on the, the Alltel framework that would provide for a common accreditation policy and a common state policy. And that if a state signed on to that policy and the accreditors signed on, an institution agreed to that policy within its state, then that institution could provide its education via telecommunications in any other state, in any other accreditation region that had also signed on to the policy. Crazy idea. Oddly enough, the accreditors said, you know, not a bad idea. And all seven of them crowded into a phone booth and came up with the CRAC policy on cross-border learning. And all of the state folks crowded into a very large stadium and all sat in opposite corners and could not come to agreement. The big states, the higher regulation states said, this is a great idea as long as all the rest of you do exactly what we do. New York led that. And a few states, Louisiana, for example, I'll never forget the words here was I'll I'll go along with what any of you folks come up with, but by the way, anybody who accepts what I do is out of their cotton picking minds. And that's by the way, a direct quote. And the state part of it completely fell apart and there was no state agreement. Fast forward to the beginning of SAN and the beginning of the effort to negotiate and WCET being really the vehicle for doing this, to negotiate an agreement among the states that resulted in the State Authorization Reciprocity Agreement. The distance between 1986, when Altel came out, and the recommendation to do exactly what it is that Sarah now represents and where we are today is light years difference. And the fact that a group of very dedicated, very smart and very pain tolerant people were able to accomplish this is absolutely remarkable. I played a small role in that. I take my hat off to those who really pulled on the oar to make it happen. Thank you folks, well done. 
That was fabulous, Mike. Thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you for helping give SAN, you know, its, its initial marching orders. You know, I, I see in the agenda, you know, you and Russ played a pivotal role in helping people understand from the very beginning, you know, how this works for um, out-of-state activity compliance. And I appreciate your support over these years um, as you've connected me with other staff members with uh, with Cooley. And, you know, so it, it's been a great partnership. We really appreciate it very much, Mike. Your leadership has been tremendous. Yeah. And by the way, the reason I do not have a Cooley logo uh, over my uh, shoulder is I, back in September, I moved from Cooley to uh, Titan Partners, which is a strategy consulting and investment banking firm in the education space. So I no longer allocate my time in six minute intervals. I sleep much better. I bet. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> well, thanks again, Mike, and we're really grateful to have you here today. So we're, we're actually going to move to our next special guest, who was also a speaker on this uh, at this very first meeting. And uh, Cheryl, just like Mike, has been instrumental in supporting us, you know, throughout. Uh, Cheryl at the time was uh, with Capella. And now she is with she has her runs her own consulting organization. And so uh, we asked Cheryl if she would speak with us today. Welcome, Cheryl. Thank you for being with us. I think you're on mute, but we would love to hear it. It's your turn. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. I uh, have been a big, big, big supporter of SAN since it before it even was called SAN or was organized as SAN. So um, I just reflect back to the fact that I had started doing state authorization work uh, at Capella, which was, is a for-profit institution back in 2001. So, uh, and at that time, it seemed like the only institutions that were aware of or paying attention to state authorization regulations were the for-profits. And they weren't about to share anything with anybody else because they considered it a competitive advantage. And so any one of us who was just learning how to do this had to learn it on our own. Um, I remember the first call I got from Russ and Megan, I believe it was in 2010. Russ is smiling. They called me and uh, asked me or they told me that they had been become aware of the federal regulations. And they asked me if I could send them a one page document that showed them the requirements for each of the states. I laughed at them. <laughs> uh, no, I can't provide a one page document. Anyway, that's how our relations started uh, and me with uh, WCET slash uh, witchy. Anyway, so from there then uh, we were in more frequent contact and I had the privilege of being at the first meeting. Um, I've got some notes here so I, so I don't forget what I want to say. Um, what I found is that it's been such a joy. Oh, by the way, I was going to wear my bright green It Depends t-shirt today, but I didn't have time to find it, so <laughs> I don't have that on. Anyway, uh, that was something that a few of us purchased. I don't know when, Russ, you might remember, but anyway, we wore it at one of the conferences. Um, San, it's been so much fun to watch SAN and the individuals involved with SAN grow and develop. Um, I'm a teacher at heart. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a teacher. And so when I had the opportunity to share with other people how this worked, it brought me great joy um, because I didn't, well, primarily because I didn't want people to have to go through some of what I had to go through <laughs> learning it on my own. Um, anyway, it's been so much fun to watch this organization uh, grow. One of the best things about it, I think, is the collaboration the willingness to share information back and forth with each other, the willingness to help each other, and just the fun we have together. I don't know that I, well, I'm, it's just always, I've only seen good relationships built uh, in the SAN network. And I think that's fabulous. 
it's one of the things I've enjoyed the most. It's not just watching people grow and develop, but I also have gained some great friendships through the ten, through the ten years. Most, if probably, I think maybe the only one I was familiar with beforehand was Jeannie, because she was a regulator, and uh, that was maybe about it. But um, so I just wanted to in, indicate that uh, with Sam, we've been able to have meetings of the minds with face-to-face -face interaction. The camaraderie among the peers has been wonderful. And it has felt like we've all been in the foxhole together uh, to fight the good fight, both internally at our institutions, where we had to convince people way above our pay scale that there was work to be done and it had to do with legal matters. And then, well, what do, what do they, what do I know? What do the people who are saying this know? And well, they've never caught us before, so what's the big deal? And well, I've talked to other schools and they're not doing anything about it, so why should we have to do anything? And on and on the list goes. Anyway, we've all been in it together and we have uh, also had the opportunity, I think, to influence some state regulators over the years. Not great big things at one time, but incrementally over time, especially when we first, uh, when we started meeting with the regulators during the NASAPS conference. I think that made a huge difference on both sides. I know that a lot of people doing state authorization work were afraid of the regulators. And um, some of the regulators were unaware of what the institutions who were crossing state borders all over the United States were contending with. So. I congratulate everybody involved. I congratulate you that are currently involved. I welcome your continued uh, participation. I think there are only good things ahead for SAN. And again, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to reminisce a little bit. Cheryl, it is a treat to have you. Thank you so much. And thank you for all that you've contributed you know, with our organization over these years and with our workshops and, you know, you've been an invaluable uh, support and resource and friend. So thank you so much for being with us today. Well, and I'm, I'm not retiring, so I'm done. No, I'm no. Help. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We, you, you, no, I've got you pinned into June. So, you know, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> so, um, and I'm referring to the June basics workshop. Mm -hmm. um, but Cheryl uh, also didn't, I don't know if she realized this, but she helped me segue. Um, by saying that, you know, her relationship was with Jeannie um, prior to. And so as I am starting to share my screen again, if I can figure out where to do this all at one time, uh, this whole multitasking thing. Um, okay, so um, as Cheryl was mentioning, uh, Jeannie's a former regulator and uh, Jeannie Aki Fine is one of our special guests today as well. And uh, I tagged her to work. So she doesn't get to just speak, she has to work. So sorry, Jeannie. But we have Jeannie uh, with us today. Um, she helped me with this trivia contest. And so I'm gonna turn it over to her to talk a little bit about it. Um, you can see some rules there and you see, um, the uh, process that we're going to do, but I'm going to turn it to Jeannie while I put the um, link to the questions in the chat. So off to you, Jeannie, and thanks very much for your help today. Sure. Thanks, Cheryl. And I'll just say quickly before we get started on that, that it has been awesome being with this group. Um, I've been with this group almost 10 years. I started, I joined Mike Goldstein at Dow Lonis just a few months after the very first meeting and have been with SAN ever since. And so it's great seeing all of you and it's been great working with all of you the past 10, almost 10 years. And with that, let's turn to what every party should have, which is a trivia contest. So the big key here is that there is no use of the internet. Don't hop on your cell phone to try to look up the answers. So we're counting on you to uh, have someone in your group that will know the answers to these questions. And Cheryl will put you in several groups. And as you can see here, we're relying on the honor system. And what we'll do is ask you to respond to 10 questions. You'll have 10 minutes to do it. And then we'll come back together and I will ask various groups what they came up with. And if someone has a different answer, please share. And at the end of the 10, we'll see if anyone had all 10 right. If we have 
more than one group that has 10 right, then we'll do a tiebreaker question and whichever team has the most answers correct will receive a prize. And we do ask that for the groups that might be fortunate enough to end up with Alan Contreras or Mike Goldstein or Russ, we ask that you guys uh, sit back and let other people answer unless they're really lost and then go ahead and you know reel them in and help them out. Don't worry, none of us remember anything. <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, sorry then for anyone who has Mike Goldstein in their group, he will not be able to help you at all. <laughs> uh, with that, Cheryl, anything else they should know before they are sent to their super secret rooms to work on their responses. Well, we're uh, fortunate. Well, yeah, we have Leah here who's going to put us in five different rooms. Right. And uh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I make sure that you have, you know, one note taker and that person can go ahead and share the, the final answers. Sorry, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you for, yeah, thank you for adding that. So yes, we are looking for you to pick huh. a scribe uh, within your team. So this is a team win. Um, is what you're going for. And so uh, you've been put in rooms. And so I'm going to uh, come over to Leah and ask Leah if she's ready to go with putting people in rooms. We are ready to go. Okay, right. folks, remember that you've, you need to um, get the questions. It's in the chat right now. So make sure you pull the questions from the chat. And we'll see you in just a few minutes. Leah, all yours. Good, Good luck, luck, everyone. We're all looking right. forward to, I'll stop sharing screen so we can see faces better. There we right. go. All right. I hope everyone had an awesome team and everyone worked together well to uh, work on this very difficult exam that you had. So we're going to start with first question. What was the year of the release of the first final federal regulation for state authorization of distance education? And uh, someone want to raise their hand who or well someone can give a shot let's just start out with team one it'll probably be easier because i can't see everyone at the same yeah time. just call the teams let's start with team one team one what was your answer we're torn between 2008 2010. all right what about uh team two similar answer different answer we said 2010. all right Cheryl is the judge of the answers. I think that Cheryl has a response that's going to align with one of you for sure. Okay, the answer is 2010. Those of you that have only 2010, mark that correct. All right, next, name one of SANS special interest teams. Let's start with team number three. Let's see, so I was three quarter and so we said professional licensure. All right. Cheryl, do you want to name a couple others just to make some Well, let, why don't we see if anybody else has an let's have try team one? 2. Team 2, do you have a have a we different answer? Secretaries of state. Okay. okay. Uh anybody have Other a different teams? answer than that even? Okay. All right. So if you put professional licensure, institutional engagement, or data protection, then you can mark your answer as correct. One of those three. All right, next. Question three was after the original final federal reg for state authorization of distance education was vacated by the federal courts, in what year or years did the Department of Education revisit the federal reg for state authorization of distance ed with a negotiated rulemaking process? How about team number five? What response did you come up with? Uh, we came up with 2016 and 2019. All right, did any team had a, have an answer that differed from that? Team three had 2014. Team three had 2014. All by itself, or did it have two and two responses? Oh, we, it wasn't clear that you wanted two responses. It was a it was an or. It was okay. a parens s. Okay, we just had 2014. All right, Cheryl. Okay, the year uh, was 2014 and 2019. All right. So how do you how do you grade that? Well, that's I'm. You can have a fourteen and nineteen or both. That's 
that might help us with split decisions later. Yep. All right. Next, name one topic area for which SAN offers a talking points white paper. Extra points if you say the one that I helped write. Uh, how about group four? We had Secretary of State filings. All right. Um, how about uh, some others? We had professional licensure dis and disclosures. We, we also had, oh, go ahead. We had international approvals. Okay. Uh, state authorization and military students. Ah, you get the extra points, Katie. All right. Uh, okay. Who who was who did we miss? Did we that that sounded like Everyone four? Everyone weigh in. Someone may have had the same one. Yeah, there's a head shake that yes, yeah, someone else. Okay, had. all right, because all of those were in fact paper white papers that we have. We have many. Awesome. All great. right. Great. Good work. Really, that's great. What year did the SAN website go live? How about group one? I guess 2014. All right. How about group two? We guessed 2016. Okay. Does any group have a different response? We guessed 2018. We had 2017. They're all over. <laughs> yeah. Group, right. group four had 2018 because we couldn't remember when the switch from the wiki to the website happened. That is exactly a yes. So uh, the answer is. The SAN website went live 2018. So if you have 2018, it was actually May of 2018. So if you had that, you have the correct answer. What day of the week, Cheryl? <laughs> I, well, I pulled the trigger while we were at um, uh, USDLA in Indianapolis. All right. Name a city other than Boulder, Cheryl, uh, that was the site of a SAN workshop. How about group three? We had a very emphatic Louisville, Kentucky on our team. There you go, oh, okay. Emphatic with Louisville, all right. How about some other, other cities, any group? St. Hey, Louis. St. Louis, Louisville, what else did I hear? I think someone else said. Atlanta. Yay, Atlanta, that was a great one. Cleveland. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Cleveland, yep. Was it Austin one too? Nope. There was an NC Sarah one. There was a, there were some other groups there. That uh, wasn't a workshop as such, but. Right. So well, we've been I'm, in St. Louis, we've been in Louisville, we've been in Cleveland, we've been in Denver. Um, Atlanta. That Atlanta. So. And uh, Arlington, Virginia. Oh. All right, so all those that were named but one were accurate. Okay, next is question seven. What popular red, green, and yellow tool was formerly used, pre Sarah mostly, to help with state authorization management? How about group two? We said stoplight. <laughs> okay, how about uh, group one? At least of the SHEO survey sheet. All right, any other responses to the popular red, green, and yellow tool? We just said spreadsheet. What group, Cheryl Thompson, what group were you in that you had to not say something? I don't know the number, but Deb was in there. Deb, we were group four. And, and she stayed silent. I will say that definitely. I will vouch for her. Shock of all shocks. See, it can that's be done. A, that's, a, that's a historic <laughs> event we need to put in the minute. Okay. All right. That's right. Okay, Cheryl, go ahead with the intended response. These were our beautiful maps. Yep. The maps. Beautiful red, the green. The, well, they were beautiful when they were green. Red, yes. not so much. Yep. The maps. That's why the I maps. said Cheryl, I know Cheryl like had like some great maps. So that's why I was I thought, man, she had to have been quiet in that group. Yeah, I remember right. the yellow, yellow represented we have the faintest idea. <laughs> that's well, correct. There was a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> it was much more than just caution. That's right. Uh, or the okay. state or the state didn't want us to know. 
Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah, there did that. that. Was, there were some super secret things happening. All right. Uh, name this number eight is name the citation number, the federal regulation of the federal regulation that requires or required that a direct disclosure be acknowledged by the student. So that was direct disclosure being acknowledged by the student. Uh, how about group five? Uh, we have 34 CFR 668.43 C5V. I did comment that uh, Catherine requires immediate professional help for having knowing for knowing that. <laughs> it was a team effort. It wasn't just me. <laughs> <laughs> did someone have a different response? Just got up to the six six eight. We had thirty four CFR, but just up to six six eight point four three. We didn't get to the subsection. It doesn't count. Um, uh, our parentheticals <laughs> were different, but it was a lack of memory and guessing. <laughs> okay. Anyone else have a different response besides point four three? Does anybody remember that that memorable 2016 regulation that has now been replaced that required that there be uh, that the direct disclosure be acknowledged for distance education, um, uh, solely distance education programs under 34 CFR 668.50. It was one of the few items well, that we yeah, actually really... thought was supportive of, pardon Mike? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm nodding in agreement. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, 668.50. All right, okay, that, moving was, on. that was one of the things that many institutions were pleased went away. All right, name a state that has reporting requirements for annual renewal for institutional approval. And obviously there are multiple ones that could be accurate. So how about group two? We said Texas. Okay. Uh, how about group one? Carolina. Okay. Group three? We said it was Texas and it's all Marshall's fault. Okay. <laughs> Does four, uh, group, <laughs> the group four or five have a different response? Group four said Oregon. Okay. Anyone else? Five? Uh, we said Texas as well. Okay. So we can see what was popular there. A lot of people thought of Marshall. Um, Cheryl? Uh, Texas, Oregon. Um, and I could use some help from Cheryl Thompson um, and our California folks, maybe. But I also said Maryland and Kentucky. Um, I am not aware that Carolina requires any. We got Terrence on the call here. Terrence, I don't believe they have a, of a reporting requirement for the renewal for uh, individual um, institutional approval. Minnesota does. Okay. Okay. Right. Wisconsin used to. I'm sorry. But those weren't ones that were named. So right, just Carolina. Right. Terrence, you're the you're the guy here. Does Carolina? Yes, does Carolina require for individual state by state institutional approval? Um, would an institution have to submit a data report uh, for annual renewal? Yes, institutions are required to renew annually. No, no, no. Do they have to provide a data report in order to do an annual renewal? Yes. Okay. 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 So Carolina's one. There we go. So everyone who responded uh, got that accurate. All right, great. Name a state agency other than the higher ed agency that may require oversight, registration, or approval if activities occur in the state. How about group three? Uh, we said Secretary of State. All right, others? Professional Licensing Board. Anybody else with anything different? Group four said um, for states like Utah that do not have a secretary of state, we need to include the division of consumer affairs. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That was good. Can you there's also the end what's in our group? <laughs> there's also Texas too that has a workforce commission. You have to get approval through their workforce commission or get an exemption that you have to post. All right, so far everybody's answers sound great. So if no one has- Commissions of higher education. Some states have commissions of mm -hmm. higher education. You get one answer, Leanne. <laughs> and this is outside of the higher education group. So we're also talking about maybe uh, tax division 
or also uh, Department of Labor, depending on what uh, you're doing in the state. Those are great answers. Well done, everyone. All right. All right. That was awesome, you guys. So if you, uh, whoever your note taker is, if you can count up the number that you got correct, then we can have a quick check in from groups one through five and see who has the most. Does any group, did any group get all 10 correct? Okay, how about nine? Okay, no one's shouting that they got all nine correct. How about eight? Group five got eight correct. Anybody else get all eight besides group five? All right, well, we don't even need to go to a tiebreaker. All right, we have a, we have a clear winner. Congratulations, group five. You will get your prizes, yay. So Catherine um, and Leah, could you all help us uh, determine who was all in group five? Make sure we have all those specific names because they will win a prize. They will win a grand prize for winning the trivia contest. Jeannie, thank you so much for uh, being our hostess with the mostest um, on yeah. this uh, trivia much. contest. This was fun. All right, without further ado, I am so excited also to introduce as a special guest, Marshall Hill, who is the original um, president and CEO of NC Sarah. Marshall, I'm so happy to have you here today with us. Uh, you know, welcome. And we look forward to, to your comments. Who, 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 who? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl and Mike and, and, and others. It's, uh, it's good to see you, even if uh, in this limited way. Um, I want to build on a little something that Mike Goldstein uh, said earlier. Uh, from the, the mid 90s to 2005, I was working at the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. Uh, and in about 2006 or so, I was the assistant to Ken Ashworth, who was the very long serving Texas Commissioner of Higher Education. And Ken, who was a wonderful mentor to me, had very strong opinions about all of this distance education stuff. So I was attending a WCET meeting and Mike was giving a talk uh, about the crazy rules that states had to deal with all of this state authorization of distance education. I think at that time, that was just becoming a phrase that we were starting to use. And I had not met Mike, but I was enjoying his talk. And at one point he said, and here is a particularly obnoxious one. And he pulled out a letter and he started to read this letter. And the further along he got, the more familiar it sounded to me. And I realized that I had written the letter for Ken Ashworth to sign. And uh, I went up and talked to Mike afterwards that, and uh, I've learned a great deal from him ever since. Uh, I wanna say a couple of things about the SAN network. Uh, maybe the, the, the principal one was the, the relationship between the SAN network and uh, the development of NC Sarah, and then the, uh, the building of NC Sarah and going forward. You know, it did not have to be as smooth as it turned out to be. Uh, folks at the SAN network, principally Russ, could have taken the position that the development and improvement of, of a SARA would lessen the need for a state authorization network. That was never the case. And Russ and early participants and continuing with Cheryl were just wonderful partners as we all worked together. And we at NC SARA relied quite strongly on the data collection that the SAN network did, which showed that an enormous number of institutions around the country were really not paying any attention at all to the need to get state authorization in states other than their own. So that provided uh, an opportunity for us to convince uh, many states and institutions that there was an unmet need and that the uh, SARA approach was a reasonable way to address it. Uh, and then the second uh, shout out is to two people who were really important in the development of, of all of this work. Uh, first, uh, Paul Schiffman, who at the time was at Excelsior College uh, and uh, leader of the President's Forum, uh, which did an awful lot of work to uh, generate the, uh, the grants that uh, allowed us to develop Sarah. 
Uh, and then uh, most importantly, Alan Contreras, who I was able to entice to leave his home state of Oregon and come and spend almost a year uh, in Boulder, Colorado. That was a considerable sacrifice for Alan, but we saw a lot of opportunity there and we thoroughly enjoyed uh, working together and with our colleagues at the SAN Network. Thank you so much, Marshall, for being with us. I, I wish we had more time, as I was saying before, uh, the folks that are on the call today as our special guests have so many great stories and so much great insight. They're all very brilliant people and you know we've appreciated their input uh, all these years. Um, so we thank them for being with us. And we are gonna go over, I just wanna give you all a heads up. So I want, uh, before I introduce our, our, our last uh, special guest, who's last but certainly not least, um, is I want to make sure to make you all aware that we had a special podcast with uh, Russ Poulin and Megan uh, Raymond, who helped put together the very first SAN meeting. Um, so you want to look for that. And also our recent Frontiers post, we had contributors, Russ. Um, we had Shirley Adams, who um, is a longtime SAN member, uh, Marianne Boki and Lana Duick, who uh, helped with uh, the um, Frontiers post about the early days and the development of SAN. So I just wanted to thank those folks before some people who have to leave. But I urge you to stick around if you can because I'm introducing Alan Contreras and I just love listening to Alan talk. Alan, so much, thanks so much for being with us today and uh, for being willing to talk with our group. Well, thank you. It's, it's uh, always a great opportunity. Uh, I did certainly enjoy being Marshall's hench, hench person uh, <laughs> all those years, both uh, in residence in Boulder and back home in Eugene, Oregon, where I live. Um, the, the, one of the things that was happening uh, uh, right before San and right before Sarah started is it, I was working as the state regulator in Oregon and of course I talked to Jeannie in Florida and other colleagues all over the state and we didn't really have a central source of information for 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 what could and couldn't be done nationwide anywhere and so I ended up doing this little paper for Shio which looked like this and that was the precursor of the San blue book that you now have which uh, has more to do with the legalities of, of colleges existing than it does with the daily regulatory stuff. But it, I think it was very helpful uh, in the early days of, of saying for, for people to come in from both from the regulatory side, from the school side, people who did know something about the federal issues, which I certainly did not. And a, and a number of my colleagues who were state regulators didn't either. Um, because we were you know, responsible for enforcing a great big thumping set of state rules. And one of the thing, reasons that, that I wanted San and Sarah to do what they're doing <clears throat> is because as a state regulator, I didn't want to spend my time enforcing those aspects of my law that were you know, kind of, what am I supposed to, to do in regulating a perfectly legitimate school that knows what it's doing? Now, some of them occasionally didn't know what they were doing, um, but I wanted to focus on the bad guys. And I think many of my colleagues did too. Uh, and when you have a Sarah in place, when you have a San that is making sure that the colleges know what the, the laws are and what they have to do around the country, it, it makes being a state regulator a lot easier. Uh, because the preparation level of the staff who work with the issues has been going slowly upward. Now, I don't, I'm not a regulator anymore. I'm an expensive consultant uh, like uh, my colleagues. But once that floor of knowledge started going up, the quality of the materials that have come into, at, at least to Oregon, the people I know here, has been consistently better. And that makes doing the, the regulatory job uh, a lot easier. Uh, so I, I, from my point of view, that's the, the greatest thing that SAN does is it, uh, especially because there's a fair amount of turnover among people who do the, the, uh, the institutional work with the states. And you come in there, you do that work for a while, and then you go do something else. So the need for the ongoing trainings that SAN does is always going to be there. <clears throat> I think those things are uh, 
very, very crucial. So I think I'll stop there. I know you're, you have plenty of time to do other things. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. Well, I thank you very much, Alan. Um, you know, I, I appreciate your thoughts and uh, sharing a little bit about how it all got started and trying to organize this work. Um, if any of you ever gets an opportunity to talk to Alan or Marshall or Russ or Mike or Cheryl Thompson or Jeannie about, or Marianne Bokey about um, how things got started in terms of trying to collect this information nationwide I mean, it's, it was a big tackle um, and uh, they all did it really well. So we really appreciate the work that they did for all of us. So what you've seen today, and, I, and I'm gonna let you all go, but I wanted to just share that um, SAN has had a tremendous 10 years and we're very grateful to our membership because you've really made us a network. We're a collaborative. We, we really value the interactions among our members and we thank you for that. And we had great models you know, to create this network, you know, from the people that you heard today. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you for playing our games because they were fun. Um, and uh, just know that you all are, are, are very much appreciated in our network. And we want this next set of years to be uh, impactful as well. So Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much to Leah for helping me structure this. Uh, thank you very much to Russ for letting, for passing the baton to me, for creating just an amazing situation and letting me, I'm so honored to be the person who got to take the baton. And thank you very much to all of our special guests today, Mike Goldstein, Cheryl Thompson, Marshall Hill, Alan Contreras, and Jeannie Yaki Fine. Thanks, everyone. And all of this will be posted on the SAN website within the next couple of days. So you can see it and you'll see our winners and there will be prizes for everyone. So Thank have you. a great day. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.